Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at um, finding the center of mass for a uniform wire, which has been bent into a semicircle. And I've just drawn extra portions of the wire here. So, you know, below this line, we're ignoring this and we're ignoring this. Although, if we wanted to include all of that wire, then you know, we would just have to make appropriate adjustments to our limits of integration. But we're only interested in those portions which are above the x-axis. And this problem is going to be a little bit different from the first, uh, first one that we did. The proof of the center of mass is at the geometric center of a rectangle or, um, you know, just a, a long thin rod type of scenario. Uh, and in this particular case, one of the things that's special about this is that we're going to basically uh, go to polar coordinates to make it easier to find the center of mass. But the other part of it is that we're also going to uh, utilize symmetry to simplify everything which is going on. So, for example, here... Uh, we know that because this is a uniform piece of wire, the mass per unit length of this wire is the same everywhere along its length, then that means that the center of mass is going to have, or I should say the wire is going to have a line of symmetry, which is here at the origin. It's going to be along that y-axis. So by doing that, we really only need to focus our attention on how much the center of mass has shifted vertically or in the y dimension. So when we looked at the um, various ways of writing our center of mass equation, it started off with, um, you know, xcm was equal to 1 over m times the integral of x dm and you know we talked about the fact that this is uh, you know quite okay and quite appropriate as long as you're uh, working with something that has a uniform uh, mass density uh, but it still requires you to remember how to use your linear mass density or lambda and we're going to see that um, another version of it uh, was the same equation could be written as xcm is equal to the integral of x dm over the integral of dm. And we said that in this case, uh, it's particularly useful whenever you have a non-uniform density. But it's still basically this form of the equation, and uh, by doing this, you know, the second one, you know, you're always going to be using uh, lambda, sigma, or rho for your densities. So you got your choice on how you want to do it as long as it's going to be a uniform mass density. And then finally, we have another version where we wrote it as r is equal to um, the integral of x i hat uh, plus y j hat dm over the integral of dm. And all this is doing really is we have two separate integrals embedded in this, where one of those integrals is just x cm is equal to the integral of x dm over dm. And then the other integral, y, is ycm is equal to the integral of y dm over the integral of dm. And so basically, this is just combining two steps into one mathematical statement. Uh, so, you know, you may choose to write it this way, you may not. But basically, this is what we're going to be using here, except now we already know that because of symmetry that this term should go to zero because this is our orig origin down here, so this is zero, zero. 
all right, so that we know along the x-axis we're going to end up with zero. And so really we just need to focus our attention on uh, the y dimension only, and that's what we're going to do to finish solving this problem. So the important quantities, just to um, you know, make sure that this diagram is clear, uh, because we're going to be switching to polar coordinates, which you may not know that until you get into the problem, but because we're going to be switching into polar coordinates, we're going to have this length ds on the outer edge, and ds is related to d theta, which is just this small angle here, and when we integrate, we're basically going to go from 0 to pi for our limits of integration, because the wire starts here, and then it ends over here. So let's start setting this up. That way there's a lot less talk and a lot less confusion. So here we go. All right, so what we have is um, just focusing on the y dimension now. So I'm going to use basically this form of the equation because I only want one dimension. I'm going to write ycm is equal to the integral of y dm over the integral of dm. And in this step, I'm just going to, uh, because we know, I just want to highlight the fact that the critical step in, um, in solving these center of mass problems is getting from a dm to a d length, which in this case is a dy. If it were the x dimension, it would be a dx. So our critical step is going to be come from this. We know that lambda is going to be equal to mass per unit length whenever it's uh, a uniform rod, and that this becomes dm over, now we don't want to say dy, because we're not talking about a wire which is only in the y dimension. We're talking about this circular arc of wire. And so the length of the wire is related to the circle and it's called the arc length so it becomes a ds in fact i could write m over s if you prefer and that's less generic and it's more specific to this problem so lambda is equal to m over s which is equal to dm ds now the problem is that we're not measuring ds, and so we can rewrite that one more time, and we get dm over, the way I get ds, r is a constant, and remember that arc length, s, is equal to r theta, so ds is going to be equal to r, which is the constant radius of our circle, times d theta. So it's the theta that is changing, and uh, so we're going to rewrite this as r d theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some substitutions. We know that dm is equal to lambda r d theta. Okay, so we just have to solve this for dm. So ycm is equal to the integral of lambda r d theta over the integral of r, sorry, lambda r, d theta. Our limits of integration, once again, we start at the x-axis, positive x-axis, and we're going to sweep through this entire arc. And so that becomes um, from 0 to pi is going to be the angle for theta. So we're going to go from 0 to pi on both of those. Okay, so we can see right away that we can um, we can cancel out some of this. R is a constant in the numerator and the denominator, so we can cancel that. Lambda is also a constant in the numerator and denominator, so we can cancel that. But, oops, I forgot to write in my y. I didn't carry my y down. There's a y right here. So we still have ycm is equal to the integral of y d theta divided by the integral of d theta. 
Okay, and those limits are still going to stay the same, 0 to pi, but it's a little tight to be writing it on here, so I'm not going to write it until we get to the end. Okay, but the problem is now y is no longer um, going to be used. I mean, we've got to integrate this according to d theta, and we don't have theta any longer. We just have y. So now we have to convert y so that it is in polar coordinates all right and to get y in polar coordinates all right we're looking at this chunk right here for setting up our problem this ds that's what we're looking at and that ds has a d theta so if i want the x component of this line right here the radius that this position that leads to to um uh that chunk of material there the x dimension is going to be equal to r cosine theta because that's what i'm trying to get here so this would become r cosine of theta the y dimension all right the y dimension this is just going to be r sine of theta okay so for y i'm going to write y is equal to r sine of theta and I'll substitute that in so we get ycm is equal to the integral of r sine theta d theta now we have an integral we can do divided by the integral of d theta and remember we're going from 0 to pi on both of these all right now Let's go up here and finish our work. So now all we have to do is integrate um, sine, sine theta. And so what we get is ycm is equal to, now the integral of the sine is minus the cosine, and r was a constant, so we get minus r cosine of theta over theta, and both of these are going to be evaluated from 0 to pi. So that means YCM is equal to a minus R, and the cosine of pi is a minus 1, minus a minus R times the cosine of 0, which is just 1. So this becomes positive this becomes positive and what we have here is 2r in the numerator in the denominator we have um, theta is equal to pi minus 0 which is just equal to pi so we find that the uh, location for the center of mass is 2r over pi on the y-axis so I don't know exactly what that's going to mean, but it's somewhere towards the bottom. We'll just say it's somewhere in here, and this becomes the center of mass for this piece of wire. Now, if you wanted to uh, solve this um, for the x dimension and show that xcm is equal to 0, all you have to do is go back to this step right here, Right, we're just going back to this step, and everything is going to be for the x dimension. So it would become xcm is equal to the integral of x d theta, where we would then write r cosine theta. And whenever you integrate that and evaluate, you end up with 0. So I'll leave that as an exercise for you um, to do on your own to demonstrate that center of mass is located at 0 on the x axis.